station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Happening now at 9, covering the entire DMV. Gunned down in the casino garage lot near where shots rang out in Maryland just this morning. The latest details from police nearby. Pain in her absence is unbearable. Catching a killer, a family continues to mourn and search for justice after a three-year-old was killed in the district, the latest developments. And a Commonwealth compromise where Virginia Republicans and Democrats met in the middle on taxing your streaming services potentially and giving teachers a pay raise. How talks also include climate concerns and impacts to your wallet. We did have some storms from Pennsylvania come south of the Mason-Dixon. I'll have more details about them. A few power outages that are still out there at the moment. And northern lights tonight. And question lingering. The chance for a colorful night sky after cloud cover dashed our opportunity to see impacts from flares from the sun just last night. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 9 this Saturday evening. I'm Ben Dennis. We begin tonight in the district. Police say four people were shot since lunchtime today. Two separate scenes, at least. The first call came in around 1130 this morning on Alabama Ave and Southeast. So there, police found two victims inside of a vehicle. A man shot several times. A woman grazed by a bullet sent to the hospital, both conscious and breathing. Then around 130 this afternoon, police were called to Hay Street in Southeast for a shooting. Two men found shot in both conscious and breathing before being sent to the hospital. We will say that is uh, Northeast there. Both of the investigations are ongoing in Maryland. Prince George's County fire says that two kids and an adult are without a home after a fire in Laurel and all broke out of the home here at Montauk Drive around 2 p.m. Officials say flames are showing from the porch parts of the roof, which did collapse. There were no reported injuries. New developments coming out of Prince George's County. A man shot dead inside of the MGM Casino parking garage early this morning in National Harbor. DC News Now reporter Christian Pena reports on scene with more on reactions from people in that area. It seems like a normal day at the harbor, but residents are shocked knowing a deadly shooting occurred at a place they normally have fun. Now, details are still emerging, but this is what we can confirm so far. A man shot and killed at the MGM National Harbor parking lot Saturday morning. It's pretty, um, pretty sad, you know? It's shocking. I don't see stuff like this all the time, so it's not just another day for me, but, um, it is a little bit more shocking than anything else. According to PG County Police, authorities responded to the shooting shortly before 5 a.m. on the 100 block of MGM National Avenue. Crime's getting a whole lot worse. When police arrived to the scene, they found a dead man. The man has not been identified and neither has the suspect. It is unclear what the motive was. Locals tell DC News now they are shocked and worried. Well, I actually think this community needs to be safe, man. Uh, there's little kids that live out here. My brother goes to school over there. It's sad. People were shooting. Now we did reach out to MGM to further learn what may have happened this morning, but as of Saturday evening, we have not heard back. Now this is an active investigation, so if you have any details as to what may have happened, you are encouraged to call 911. For now, reporting out of the National Harbor, I'm Christian Pena, DC News Now. And thanks to Christian. Staying in PG County, several people heard after four cars crashed in Shady Grove. Officials say it happened on Metro Access Road just after 3:30. On scene, EMS evaluated several folks for non-life-threatening injuries. Some lanes were blocked as that investigation was unfolding. And another tense night of demonstrations surrounding the campus of George Washington University. Just last night, pro-Palestinian students met with school leadership to pressure them to cut financial ties with Israel. But just before that meeting, the school made it clear that would not happen. Students were unhappy that University leadership would not consider divestment or commit to any of their demands. The students also say their conversation with administration should have happened sooner. The university did make it clear it's not considering changes to endowment investment strategy with Israel. Students who brought their demands to the table say there cannot be a dialogue knowing the school already made up its mind. How can we engage in productive conversation when your engagement with our community is so limited that you that you fail to make the conversation accessible. We see through the irony. For now, we want to see some form of commitment that the university does have a concern and care for the well-being and humanity of Palestinian students. We will continue on our negotiations process in an effort to achieve that material change over the summer. Students say their next meeting with school leadership is tentatively set for tomorrow. Students also told us they do not care how long it takes, saying they will get the change they want and won't rest until it happens. 
Meantime, if you looked up earlier today in DC, you might have caught dozens of vintage planes flying above the National Mall, celebrating 85 years of general aviation. The Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association marked the anniversary with a flyover in one of the country's more or most restricted airspaces. 60 historic planes flew from Frederick down the Potomac River and toward the U.S. Capitol. Time is 9.05 this Saturday night, May the 11th. Derek, you got a little look at the radar behind us because some folks, they're seeing some precipitation, the little one out there, others not. Yeah, there is a little bit of a shower and storm activity out and about. Some thunderstorms back off towards the northwest, towards Cumberland and Kaiser at the moment. Uh, if you remember from the 6 o'clock broadcast, we had, of course, that tornado warning south of Pittsburgh with a confirmed tornado. Watch this storm here, but also watch this one to the south. As this storm uh, continues on, most of its energy is then focusing in on the storm to the south, which is just right, si right outside our viewing area and as it continued onward south of the Mason Dixon line, we did have some power outages in Friendsville that led the National Weather Service to make a change to this warning and made it a, a severe thunderstorm with a tornado possible. But as this continued to cross into uh, uh, going into West Virginia along areas of the Potomac, looks like the storm for now has subsided a good bit, but we're going to keep an eye on things as we head at this very late hour. Thankfully, a lot of locations here in this region have already seen rainfall, so we're already seeing a more stable atmosphere at the moment, but there's still some little pop up thunder showers that may cause a, a look for concern here and there, but we'll have another round of rain to come as we head in towards Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. We may see a sprinkle or two for Mother's Day, but I don't think that's going to hurt you too bad. As we head in towards Tuesday and Wednesday, expect up to a quarter to a half inch of rainfall. We could even see even more rain by the time the weekend arrives as we head in towards Friday and Saturday. All right, Derek, thank you. Just last night, a Southeast DC community came together to remember the tragic killing of three year old Taya Settles. One week ago, Taya was shot and killed inside of a car outside of Garfield Hills Apartments on Hartford Street. U.S. Park Police flew the little girl to the hospital where she later died. During last night's vigil, representatives for Taya's family read a very emotional statement from her parents. Taya was a bright light in our lives filled with laughter, joy, and boundless energy. Her passing has left an irreplaceable void in our hearts that can never be filled. Taya was not just our daughter. She was a cherished sister, granddaughter, niece, cousin, and friend. Her life was cut short far, too soon, and the pain of her absence is unbearable. If you know anything about the shooting, you're asked to call police. There is a $50,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. In Virginia, stolen cars on the rise in Prince William County. Locals say it is a huge problem, only getting worse. Our Northern Virginia reporter Max Marcilla shows us a few reasons behind the uptick. Not all car thefts are like this one, but the one that happened at Michigan Auto Group in Woodbridge last year is certainly not unique. Broke into the dealership, broke into the office, stole the keys, went out there and stole four high-end cars. Those were four cars, but hundreds have been taken in Prince William County in recent years. New crime data shows motor vehicle thefts combined attempted and successful increased by 55% from 2022 to 2023. The numbers are even higher so far in 2024. As far as why this problem has gotten worse, police say there's a number of different explanations. The first is simply an increase in crimes of opportunity. The numbers of people who leave their keys in the car, whether they're pumping gas or delivering food or just trying to keep the heat or the air conditioning on. Then there's another problem, police say. There is that influence of social media, specifically on teenagers. But at the end of the day, if they want to take the car, they'll take it. A TikTok trend showing people how to start and steal a car is a major problem. Seeing youth using them as joyriding. Other times, police say the cars or parts are sold. But police warn stolen cars can lead to danger and sometimes a more violent crime. This is the scene last June when a man who stole a car allegedly used it in an attempt to run over an officer. The then 18 year old suspect now facing an attempted aggravated murder charge. It's unclear how he stole the car. We continue to kind of push education to, to vehicle owners specifically about making sure that they keep their doors locked. Police are working on the problem through that education and events giving out steering wheel locks. Ahmad Rahim tells us it falls on manufacturers too. They hooked up a computer to the OBD port and they literally just drove away with the car in two minutes, a $60,000 car. So 
I mean, it's got to be the manufacturer. It can't be anybody else. Reporting in Woodbridge, Max Marcella, DC News Now. Our thanks to Max in Woodbridge. After a tense back and forth, Virginia lawmakers have reached a compromise on the state budget, and it could very well impact your wallet. The budget includes a 3% pay raise for teachers, state employees, for each of the next two years. And there are no new tax increases. That means there will not be a previously discussed sales tax on digital goods like your streaming services. It will also not include language requiring the Commonwealth to rejoin the regional greenhouse gas initiative, a win for some of the GOP. Meantime, Democrats urge the governor to make decisions on measures still sitting on his desk. The governor still has a skills games piece of legislation before him that he has not acted upon. And it's incumbent upon the governor to act upon that legislation. He has to make decisions on if he's going to veto it or he's going to pass the legislation. He has legislation before him. And lawmakers return to Richmond Monday to approve the compromised budget. It then goes to Governor Glenn Youngkin for his signature. Well, the University of Maryland School of Education is honoring teachers for Teacher Appreciation Week. The school surprised three teachers with gifts and a $1,000 check. Teachers are Jamie Amaya from International High School, Pedro Gonzalez of Samuel Ogle Middle, and Alexis Cutler of Tyler Heights Elementary. Cutler, who was a Teacher of the Year candidate last year, calls it the best interruption ever. Day to day gets tough and, you know, it's always different. Um, but when things like this happen, it just reiterates the passion and, and how we can help students. These teachers were all students at UMD School of Education. They hope to use the checks to get, yep, you guessed it, supplies for students. A lot of sacrifices put into the classroom indeed. Coming